Hey guys, today I'm going to be continuing on with my violin help series and I'm going to be talking about how to do ricochet bowing today. This is also a bowing that I've started to learn quite recently. I think it's been a year or so since I've started to incorporate it in my playing. During that time period, I've had a lot of trouble with this bowing and I've gotten a lot of help with it from my teacher. So I have a few tips to share with you guys so it can make ricochet bowing a little bit easier for you guys. I'm mainly going to use Vitaly Chacon again for my examples of ricochet bowing. Ricochet bowing is a bow technique where you spring your bow. It's like, um, it's marked with like the slur with a bunch of staccato markings in it. It's kind of like spiccato except like slurred. That's what I think of it. It's more springing and it requires a lot more control than you think. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Ricochet bowing sounds a little bit like this. The first tip that I would like to give is to not practice this so much in slower tempo. Um, what I mean by this is that it's okay to practice it in slow tempo um, to learn the notes and stuff, but otherwise, I just suggest that you don't focus too much on playing it perfectly at a slower tempo. And this is because ricochet is one of those bowings that is much easier to execute at a higher speed than it is a slower speed. I think this mainly has to do with the springing bow aspect of it because springing the bow requires speed in the bow and speed in the tempo or else you it's really easy to lose control of the bow and another thing that i want to talk about that relates to the control of the ricochet bowing is how far you guys go off of the string when you guys spring on the bow so ideally you would like to spring a little bit off of the string and not too much so you have to spring as little as you can off of the string. Because ricochet bowing, you have to go on and off of the string really quickly. And if you go too far off of the string, then the sound will be a lot more harsh and you won't have as much control over the bow because you won't have time to really take care of your sound quality. For example, if I go way too off the string, then it would sound something like which would be really harsh. If you take care and try not to go too far off the string, it would sound like which would be a lot more gentle and smooth without a harsh sound. So that's what I recommend. Another thing that I want to talk about is where in the bow you're doing your ricochet bowing. So Definitely not at the tip or anywhere in the upper half. It won't work out because um, you have less control over this top half of the bow. It would lead to a ricochet bowing that's really, really all over the place and you would have no control whatsoever on the bow and the sound quality. I would recommend um, in the middle. So you would have to experiment to see which area which specific area of the bow fits right for you and makes the best sound the bottom half i would not recommend either because it tends to create a lot harsher of a sound than you want it to be like that crunchy sound that you don't want that's what it produces even though you have a lot of control over your bow it creates a sound quality that you do not want so right here Somewhere around right here is the ideal place that you would want to experiment with. It's easiest to spring your bow and it's easiest to take care of your sound quality because there's not as much weight, but at the same time, there's not too little weight on the bow. So when you're doing ricochet bowing, I want to talk about which part of your arm is most active in this. First of all, the upper arm would not at all be active in the ricochet bowing, you would mainly want to use 
your hand and your lower arm for this technique. So it requires less movement, less um, strength, less action. So it would be easier to execute for your body physically because violin playing can be really straining physically sometimes. The last thing that I want to talk about is going to improve your sound quality a lot. Sound quality was the one thing that I was struggling most with for ricochet bowing. This tip will help you to control your sound quality and make it a little bit more gentle and without that harsh crunchy sound in the beginning. Sound quality is super important because if there is a crunchy harsh sound in the towards the beginning, since the notes of ricochet are super super short, you want the audience and the listener to be able to hear the tune of the note, but if there's a harsh sound in the beginning, then they won't really be able to identify that note specifically. They'll just be hearing that harsh, crunchy sound. So to fix that sound, I learned that if you take your bow and have less bow hair touching the string, so you would turn your bow hair towards you and you play... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So if you turn your bow hair towards you and you play ricochet in this way, then it will improve your sound quality because it will just create a less harsh tone. I have one last thing that I want to say is if you're struggling with playing ricochet bones inside the repertoire that you're, you have to play ricochet in, an important thing that you should do is always, 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 always incorporate bow bowing techniques into your scales. If scales are too hard for you, then it's easier, it's much easier to um, practice ricochet by doing open strings. Yeah, those are the things that I've learned so far when trying my best to improve my quality of ricochet. So I hope you guys got something out of this or learned something out of this and know how to practice ricochet a little bit better now to improve it. That's a wrap. I will see you guys in the next video. I hope this helped a little bit. Bye.